G'day guys and welcome to me lab and to our third lesson in our uh, Super Bogan Brothers Godot platformer tutorial series. Um, now I still remember the first time I uh, played Super Mario Brothers and jumped on that first little Goomba's head. Actually, to be honest, I'm pretty certain the first time I ran straight into him. Uh, the second time I jumped on his head and he died and I still remember that because, you know, the, when are we talking about? Christmas of 1987? Um, home consoles were a brand new thing, right? I don't think I knew anyone with one. We were one of the first families I knew to get one. And spending all those Christmas holidays uh, squishing Goombas and squishing Coopers and getting Cooper shells hitting me from rebounding backwards when I wasn't expecting all that was just a, a wonderful time. Now, for our game, Super, Super Bogan Brothers, we need to be a little bit more uh, Australian. Obviously, you can use whatever uh, whatever sprites you want for your game, but I'm going to be using what is probably the, the Queenslander's ultimate enemy, and that is the Cane Toad. So we are going to be making a Cane Toad enemy today that uh, in our next lesson, probably when we jump on him, he will uh, get squished and die. But in this one, we're going to set up that enemy. We're going to get him started. So let's uh, have a look at our WWSS and then we'll get stuck in. So what are we getting up to today? We are creating our enemy scene, script and animation. Why? To start getting some challenge and interest into our game. For today's lesson, you're going to need to be able to understand and apply how to create scenes and nodes, which we have already done, but we'll go over it again in detail. And so by the end of this lesson, you will have a mobile enemy that you can interact with in our next Next lesson when we get stuck into combat we'll start to be able to uh, actually have damage and all that happening so jump on into Godot and let's get started so here we are where we left off in our last lesson lesson two where we've made our player character and we're giving him movement and stuff so let's do a quick test just to refresh our memories of what we can do so we've got movement and animations and oh that's right I changed it from the space bar to the up button to jump so that's our guy as he stands at the moment animated left and right jumping left and right Perfect. All right, so let's close down our little preview. What we want to do is get our new scene created for our enemy. So to create a new scene, hopefully you remember, we come up to the top here and we click on the plus sign. That's then creating a new empty scene. And we want to create a character body 2D as our root node. So we come to our nodes, we click on other node and we search for character body 2D and hit enter. And that adds it to our node list for our scene. I want to now rename it to Toad. So I click on that character body 2D node. It allows me to rename it and I call it Toad. Next thing I want to do is uh, save it. So Command S, Control S, and I want to save it as Toad.tscn. So that is fine by me. Um, and now what I want to do is add an animated sprite 2D to our root node. So we come up over here and we click on the plus for the nodes, just like we did to do the root node. And we search for animated sprite 2D, hit enter. And we come across to our inspector over this side, find where it says animation, expand that menu. Where it says sprite frames, we click on the empty and then we move down and click on sprite frames again and then we click on it again. All right, and that brings up our little animation stuff down the bottom here. So next thing we need to do is actually get our, um, our sprite into here. So if you're doing this in class, you know you've got those sprites in the OneNote or the QLearn or whatever we're using, whatever system we're using at the moment. If you're doing this online, you can go to my itch.io or my GitHub to grab them. Um, there's also the full like lesson resources for each one in terms of the, the completed um, scenes and stuff, just in case you're having some trouble. So you can get them from there. I'm going to rename this default animation to hop and you'll find out why because of my code. Um, and I want to grab my toad image and drop it in here as well. So I've got my toad, I've got my toad scene that we just saved. So now we want to make those animations. Well, there's only one animation we're going to make. So we click on the grid there in the um, animation bit and we go to toad and we click open and then it comes up showing us our sprite strip but of course it's getting all the the number of sprites and things wrong so we've actually only got one vertical and we've got what oh, yeah, there that looks right uh, eight horizontal all right so our toad this whole thing is going to be its um default hop animation so i'm just going to select all of it um it's going to be its autoplay and we want it to go at Actually, we might want it to only go about four. We, we don't want it to hop too fast. Okay, so that is our basic um, sprite sorted out for our toad. Let's zoom in on him a little bit and give him a collision shape next. So we're going to click on toad again. We're going to click the plus. We're going to um, search for collision. 
shape 2D, that brings it up and then we can go over to our shape in our inspector and down and give a circle like that. Um, I'm just gonna move these up so they're on, on the line. It just helps me to organize things later. Might make that a little bit smaller. There we go. So now we've got a collision shape for him as well. Um, I'm gonna save that again. And now let's uh, have a look at our, well, we need to make a script for our toad. That's our next step. So I'm gonna click on script up the top. We don't have one here yet. So I'm gonna click on toad root node over there. And then I'm gonna click on the little add script button there. And yes, we want it to be called toad.gd. Doesn't matter about all the, the preamble stuff, but we'll copy it in there anyway. So it gives us our standard character body 2D stuff, but we're actually gonna do, do some different things. So what uh, we're gonna do in terms of our script, I'm gonna paste it all in here and we're gonna talk our way through it. All right, so here is my Toad script. Let's go through it line by line. So hopefully by the end, you've got a bit of an idea about what each line does and you can be copying these down as we go. All right, so the first line extends character body 2D. What is this doing? Well, it's saying that um, because our root node is a character body 2D and that root node has certain properties, we're extending those properties to this script. Then we have a constant speed of 25. We don't want our frog to go too fast, our toad to go too fast. We import our gravity settings. Um, so with our last tutorial series, it was a top down, very, very different. We need some gravity now to bring our things down to our ground level. So we've got to import our gravity. Um, I'll scroll across so you can see all of that. But what we're doing is we're, we've got a variable called gravity and what it is is this project settings.get setting and then there's that file path, all right? So we're just um, importing these uh, this gravity um, function or existing settings so that our game has gravity without doing the whole thing ourselves. Now we've got an on ready variable for this animated sprite 2D. This is so that we can um, make changes to our animation as things are happening. And then our physics process. So I've explained this before, but um, we don't have a ready function here, but you can consider the functions of, or the ready function and the physics process function in GD script a little bit like you would consider your setup and loop functions in Arduino. So if you've got some experience with Arduino and microcontrollers, you know you've got a loop function, which is stuff, uh, sorry, a setup function, which is stuff we wanna happen at the start, when that first loads and then we've got a loop function which just goes over and over again well in gd script it's kind of similar right we can have a ready function which is things we want to happen when it first um, starts up when that um, script is first instanced i guess and then we've got a physics process function which goes every frame so depending on your frame rate is going to determine how often these processes are run so in our physics process function for our um, toad we want to have um, our velocity and gravity all sorted out and delta is basically how many frames we've got so this is how we're calculating that um, so we've got the gravity up here this variable so what are we doing well our velocity y so our up and down velocity is relative to our gravity which is pulling us down um, times by our frames per second and then our horizontal speed see how we're not taking into account gravity for our horizontal it's just our velocity x um, takeaway speed so our speed is up there and that's going to obviously depend on which way you're going Keeping on scrolling down. Now we're calling two functions in our physics process function. So the first one we're calling is update animation, which is our next little bit of code. Um, and then the next one is move and slide, which is just a standard thing that we call to make sure our um, our character bodies can move around. There, there are other options. It doesn't just have to be move and slide, but we're gonna use move and slide here. Um, you can have a look in the documentation if you wanna know more about that. Um, and our update animation. So here is the function we're making in this script for for our animation to work. So function update animation. So it is animated sprite 2D, which was this variable up here we made. And we just wanted to play the hop animation, which is the one that we just made. So hopefully that all makes sense. We can give it a save. Um, and now we're gonna go, I'm gonna click on our world scene and our 2D view. So this is our world in 2D. And I'm gonna find our toad.tscn over here. And I'm just gonna drag it straight into um, the world scene like that. And then we've now got, actually what I'll do is I'll drag it up to the tile map. So it's a child of the tile map. Um, and the player should be as well. Just so we can sort out um, Y sorting and things later on. So we've got our um, tile map, our player and our toad are children of the tile map. Our toad has a script that should mean it'll just work its way across this way. And our player has all those things. Now, when our toad gets here, it's just gonna get stuck, but we can deal with that later. So let's um, make sure everything's saved, give it a test. Dun, 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 and I can still jump. You can see our frog, our toad is hopping along. 
I think we might need to tweak the animation a little bit. You can sort of see, <laughs> you can sort of see that he's he's a bit of a slow mover and he's sort of crawling. But those are all things we can tweak as we go. That's it. We've got our basic enemy set up. We've given it a script so that it can move. We've given it animation so it looks like it's moving. But it's for you to just tweak that. Get the speed right. Get the frames per second right. Fiddle around with all those settings until it's the way you want it to be. All right, let's close this one down. I'm going to um, head over and we're going to do our must may might and all that sort of stuff now so you know exactly what you need to get done. Remember, you don't have to try and keep up as you watch it the first time. Feel free to watch it through see what the outcome is, rewind it, work your way through it step by step. All right, let's have a look at our must, may, and our might. What you must get done to keep up in this lesson is to get that enemy scene, script, and animation sorted. You may like to start expanding your tile map so you've got more of a level to play with. And uh, something you might like to do is experiment with adding additional instances of the enemy into your scene. So to recap what we did today, well, we set up our enemy scene um, and gave it movement and animation. And next time we will start on our combat system. It's gonna take a couple of lessons, but we'll get started on it in the next one. The quote I'd like to leave you with this week is from Albert Camus. And he said, to be happy, we must not be too concerned with others. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.